Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another car review. Today we have a new brand and a very special car. This is a 1992 Oldsmobile Toronado Trofeo. This is a very futuristic car not only with its styling but also with the technology and features that are in the inside and I really can't wait to show you all what makes this car that special and futuristic. But before we get started, I would like to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing. We are now over 12,000 subs, which is a huge number. However, only about 10% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you could subscribe, it would be a huge help. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. And I wanted to let you guys know that I am now selling merchandise. If you are interested, you can click on the link in the description below. And if you are in need of a new hat, jacket or shirt, you can find it all right there. Also on that website is a bunch of General Motors merchandise, including merchandise for all of GM's brands. It has some very nice stuff and I've been pleased with the merchandise that I have bought. Also in the description are links to gmcarclubs.org and the Oldsmobile Club of America. These groups are full of people who are interested in cars such as these and keeping excitement around them alive. So if you'd like to, you can feel free to join those clubs. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the video. But before we start talking about this particular Oldsmobile, I would like to walk you guys through the history of the Oldsmobile brand as well as the Toronado. Oldsmobile was founded by Ransom E. Olds in Lansing, Michigan in 1897, but was later purchased by General Motors in 1908, and it was positioned as their middle brand, essentially meaning it was a little bit more luxurious than a Pontiac or a Chevrolet, but not as nice as a Buick or Cadillac. But even though Oldsmobile was kind of positioned as a useless middle child within all of the GM brands, that doesn't mean it wasn't special. Oldsmobile was most often used as GM's most futuristic and forward-thinking brand when it came to technology and styling. General Motors would occasionally put new technology or features into Oldsmobile cars first to see if the public liked them and if the technology worked before rolling them out into other of GM's more mainstream brands. And because of this, Oldsmobiles were the first to get some pretty neat stuff. For example, it was the first brand to get a automatic transmission in the 1940s, the first brand to get a turbocharged engine in the 1960s, the first heads-up display in the 1980s, and the first satellite navigation system in the 1990s. And the Oldsmobile brand occasionally did quite well for itself. In the 70s and 80s, it was a particular high point, and they sold over 1 million vehicles in 1985, with the Oldsmobile Cutlass being the most popular car in America for multiple years. However, sales for Oldsmobile started to slump during the 1990s. Much of this was due to competition with other GM brands and Japanese imports that were starting to become popular in the United States. And eventually in the early 2000s, GM began to kill off the Oldsmobile brand by discontinuing one model at a time. And by 2004, the entire brand had been dissolved. But even though the Oldsmobile brand doesn't exist anymore, that doesn't mean that they didn't make special cars. This Oldsmobile Toronado is one of the most futuristic models from the modern era and one of my favorites. They made four generations of the Oldsmobile Toronado and they were built from 1967 through 1992. The first generation was built as a personal luxury car and was the first front wheel drive American built car since the Accord 812 in 1937. The fourth generation, which is what this car is, was built from 1986 to 1992. And just like previous generations, it was built on the e-body platform, which was most notably shared with the Buick Riviera and the Cadillac Eldorado. And to help boost sales, Oldsmobile came out with the Trofeo trim, with Trofeo meaning trophy, and this car was a bit more aggressive. It came with dual exhaust, side moldings, as well as bucket seats and tougher suspension. However, the Toronado was eventually discontinued in 1992 and was essentially replaced by the Aurora sedan. Starting off the review of this particular Toronado, I'd like to take a look first at the front end of the car. I think this is a very sleek and aggressive looking front end. It has a lot of slim horizontal 
horizontal lines up here. It has pop-up headlights, which hadn't been seen on the Tornado since the late 1960s. It also has an Oldsmobile badge on the left headlight, which I think is a pretty unique place for it. There are fog lights up here and turn signals, but there is a Trofeo badge in the middle of the grille. Rather than having an Oldsmobile badge, which I think makes the Trofeo trim all the more special looking and unique. Now moving along to the side of the Oldsmobile Tornado, there is a slim cornering light up front, which of course will make it easier to make turns at nighttime. And there's also a Trofeo badge on the front quarter panel of the vehicle to help show off the Trofeo name just a little bit more. And from the side of the Tornado, it's really easy to see just how large these doors are on the car. And this makes it easier to get into the back seat so you don't have to squeeze yourself just as much. The doors also have their own door locks, which is nice to see. And there is also a Tornado badge just behind the doors on this car. And from this angle, you can also get a good look at the side molding on the car, which runs along the doors, the front quarter panel, the front bumper, the back bumper. It's a very nice look and it actually does make the car look and feel just a bit more aggressive with the Trofeo package. And on the roof is a sunroof, which is power operated. And of course it opens to let either more light or air into the car. And something to make note of, these wheels are not stock. These are of course chrome wheels. They're a little bit bigger than what would have been on the original Tornado, but it's still not a bad look for this car. They're not overdone, but these are not the original wheels that would have come with this car. Now moving along to the back end of the Tornado, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the design back here. There are many more horizontal lines here. It's once again, kind of a theme that mimics the front end of the car. There are body colored lines within the very long light bar in the back of the car. And I'm also just very glad they kept that design because there's plenty more room here for tail lights that could be larger, but I'm glad that they kept them really thin and small, which just helps to keep the design looking more sleek and aggressive. And I also really like that it has dual exhaust. That is something that came with the Tornado Trofeo. And there is a Oldsmobile badge on the back as well as another Trofeo badge. But what's really cool about the Trofeo badge is that it can be slid over and reveal the keyhole to the trunk. This is something that many other GM cars at the time had, but it's nice to see the Oldsmobile also had that same feature. And once you're ready to get into the trunk of the Oldsmobile, all you have to do is move the Trofeo badge off to the left. Then you can stick the key inside, twist, and the trunk opens. And inside of here, there is actually a good amount of space. It is about 14 cubic feet, which is a lot for a smaller car such as this, but the trunk is very long, relatively deep, and has plenty of room for anything you might wanna put in here. There is a spare tire underneath the mat back here, as well as a little cubby space. And there's also a really interesting looking yellow button in the trunk. Well, this button can be used to unlock both of the doors on the Trofeo. It's actually a pretty good idea to have this button here because say you open your trunk, maybe you're loading up groceries or something else into the back. And if you have kids or someone else who want to get in the car and it's locked, you can just press that button and the doors will unlock. However, I do have a complaint when it comes to the trunk of the Tornado. It has a very high lift over. As you can see, the trunk really opens up the top section of the trunk, not the bottom section down where the taillights are. So if you want to load up something heavy, you're really going to have to lift it quite high to get it into the back, which can be a pain sometimes. However, once you're done with the trunk, all you got to do Slam it shut and it is closed. Next, let's take a look underneath the hood and see what is powering the Toronado Trofeo. So luckily we have a smaller hood than normal. So this isn't gonna be too hard to open, thank goodness. And under here, we find the 3.8 liter 3800 V6 engine. This isn't an extremely powerful engine from the time, but it gets decent numbers, about 170 horsepower and 220 pound-feet of torque. It also gets decent gas mileage, about 18 in the city and 27 on the highway. From what I've been able to tell and read about this engine, it's a very reliable engine, people like it, and it's also been built in a lot of other General Motors vehicles from the time. However, being the Trofeo version of the old I think it would have been pretty cool if they would have figured out a way to get a V8 engine under the hood just to make this a more sporty vehicle than what it already is. Maybe getting the North Star engine in here would have been great, or it would have been great to have a supercharged version of the 3800 because I believe that did exist in the, at the time in some Buick models. However, this is still a pretty good fit for this vehicle. It's still powerful enough, but I think it would have been nice if there was a little bit something more special with the Trofeo trim. Next, let's start up the 3800 engine and hear how it sounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next, let's take a look at the key fob that comes with the Oldsmobile Toronado. As you can see, we have our square and round keys, which is classic GM. The square key being used to start the car and the round one being used to unlock the doors and the trunk. And as you can see, I believe this does have the pass key, which is this little piece of plastic on the key, and that's like an electronic chip that allows the car to know that this is the correct key to the vehicle and it will allow it to start. And what is a nice surprise is this car did come with a key fob. So you can, of course, unlock, lock, and open up the trunk. And I believe this button here is used to turn on the interior lights of the car or the exterior lights. So those are the keys to the Trofeo. Pretty simple, but it's nice that it did come with a key fob. Now that we've taken a look at the exterior of the Toronado, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. So, taking a look at the interior of the Oldsmobile Toronado, I really very much do like the interior color here. It is maroon. It matches the white exterior extremely well. However, there is something that I don't really like much about this interior, and that is that it's basically plastic fantastic in here. The door panel is covered with this really hard plastic. There's even fake plastic stitching on the sides of the doors as well. The dashboard is extremely hard touch plastic, but I especially do not like how the door handles are made out of this really cheap black plastic. It looks like this door handle belongs on a Tonka truck rather than an actual vehicle, but this is a 90s GM car and I'm not too surprised that there is a lot of harder plastics in here, especially since this isn't something like a Cadillac or a Buick. Taking another look at the door, there are a few things to point out here. Firstly, there are some controls here for the driver's seat. The controls aren't exactly intuitive, but you do get used to it fairly quickly. There are also switches for the power windows, as well as the power mirrors on this car. And there is also a door lock lever, as well as a door lock button. But my favorite thing about the door is that it has this badge called Dimensional Sound, which I'm sure is something that Oldsmobile is using to brand their sound systems in their car, like it's gonna take you to another dimension because it's that good. And I also really like how there is an Oldsmobile logo and Oldsmobile on the door sills of the car so you can see that every time you get in and out of the Toronado. Next, let's get inside and see what it's like. Okay, now we are on the inside of the Oldsmobile Toronado Trofeo. And I do very, 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 very much love these red bucket seats on the interior. Once again, these came with the Trofeo package and they're just a little bit more bolstered than what the regular seats would have been in the Toronado. However, even though I did mention that there are controls for the seat on the door panel, there are even more controls for the seat in the center console. There are several different buttons on the center console of the car. The one on the furthest left can be used to adjust the front part of the seat where my legs are. You can move it up and down. Then the next two buttons are used to adjust the lower lumbar or the upper lumbar. And then the final button is used to adjust the recline of the seat. And there's also another switch here that can switch it over to the passenger side. So both the driver and the passenger can kind of fight over these switches and adjusting each other's seats just for fun. <laughs> But it's really cool that these seats can be adjusted adjusted that much because it makes it all the more comfortable for the driver and passenger inside of this car. The Tornado also came with a very nice steering wheel as well. It is red just like the rest of the interior and it has an Oldsmobile badge in the center. There are also buttons along the sides of the steering wheel as well. The ones on the left can be used to adjust the temperature and the fan speed in the car and the ones on the right can be used to adjust the volume and the radio as well. These top switches are used for the horn. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. <laughs> You know, it's actually not a bad sound. It's not like a trumpet horn from a Cadillac, but it also doesn't sound super weak either. So yeah, pretty nice sounding horn. Next on the steering column are several different things. Firstly, there is a stock here to adjust the tilt of the steering wheel, as well as another one for our turn signal and cruise control, as well as our wiper controls as well. And then behind the steering wheel are the gauges. There's a speedometer here, an odometer, as well as several other gauges like the engine temperature and your fuel gauge, all the normal kind of stuff. 
There's also a small information center at the top of the gauges, which gives a little bit of information like the odometer and tripometer. And there are a couple buttons to the right of the gauges, which are used to adjust the things inside of the information center. And on the left side of the dashboard are the headlight controls. You can turn them on and off here. You can also adjust the brightness of the interior lights as well as the dashboard. And you can also adjust the Twilight Sentinel, which is how long the headlights stay on on the car after you walk away. But next, we're going to talk about my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite thing about this car and about just about any other car I have ever reviewed. And that is the center color touchscreen on this car. This car came with what was called the Visual Information Center, and it is placed in the middle of the dashboard and is essentially a TV, which is a touchscreen in the middle of the car. And it was a $1,300 option back in the day, making it extremely expensive and also pretty rare. Now, obviously this is very futuristic and also very rare to see in a car from the early 90s. However, it wasn't the first General Motors car to come with a touchscreen. I believe that the Buick Riviera was the first to come out with one. However, I believe it wasn't really a color screen. It really was only black and green. This one is better because it has more colors than just black and green, and it also has many more interesting features and functions as well. So taking a closer look at the touchscreen, it has a lot of functionality and definitely a massive amount of buttons. However, before you can actually use the touchscreen, you have to either turn the key onto accessory mode or start the car. And once you do, a really cool Oldsmobile badge shows up on the center screen. And it also says Oldsmobile Trofeo, built especially for Dr. Nick Riviera. I looked up Dr. Nick Riviera, and I think either the current owner of this car or one of the previous ones has a sense of humor, because I'm pretty sure that this is a character from the Simpsons TV show. Absolutely hilarious. But it's really cool that you could obviously adjust this so you could actually put your own name into it so your car will greet you with your full name as you enter and start your car. But now that the screen is turned on, let's talk about how these buttons work around the screen and how the screen itself self works. So the buttons on the left can be used for the radio controls as well as your climate controls. They're basically all hard buttons for things that you'd want, want to use quite commonly, but you can also use the touch screen to adjust these things as well. The buttons on the right side of the screen are the ones that are the most important to the touch screen. The one on the top that says status can bring you to basically what is a home page. You can see most of the information you'd want to see on a regular basis. For example, you can see all of your radio presets at the top. You can tap on them to adjust adjust them or change the radio station that you're on. You can also adjust your climate controls towards the bottom where it shows the outside temperature as well as the temperature inside of the car. And it also gives some more general information such as today's date, the time, as well as a compass, which is all really cool. Then if you touch the button below this, which is labeled info, this one shows much more information about the car itself and the system. It shows you when you had your previous oil change. It also shows the miles that you've accumulated. And it also gives you a message when you are due for a new oil change. Another option here is called engine data. This one is used to give you the engine voltage, engine temperature, oil pressure, basically all the important stuff you need to know. But if you want to see it on a virtual screen rather than in the actual gauges ahead of you, you can just look over there. And then the next option on this page is the visual information center option. And this one is used to adjust the brightness of the screen. You can also turn on or off the system tone, which is essentially the sound the car makes when you press a button on the center touchscreen. Or you can also hit the demo button, which I'm pretty sure gives you a demonstration of how this system works because no one in the 90s would have known how, how the heck a touchscreen inside of a car would have worked. And another option here is called System Monitor. And this one may be my favorite one because it shows a virtual image of the Toronado Trofeo. But what this basically does is it gives you warnings when you may need to know something. It may tell you when you need to turn on your headlights or if you're low on fuel. It may also tell you that your door is open. Then the next button down on the right is labeled Navigation. And this is a little bit misleading because you might think, oh, well, this car has GPS navigation. No, it does not. This is actually for a compass. And when you press it, it looks pretty awesome and it has a bunch of colors on it and shows you what direction you're going in. But no, it is not a GPS system. The next page that you can view on this screen and button you can use to get there is called date and time. And this is another one of my favorites. What you can do here is you can view your calendar every day of the week for whatever month you wanna see. You can also go into the date book, which is where you go to set an event. You can obviously type in the name for this event as well as whatever other information you may wanna put in there, the time and the location. And then once you save it into your calendar, the car will then save it 
and will warn you when that event is coming up. Pretty impressive stuff and also very useful. And then the final button here in the final mode that this screen can go into is the trip computer. Here you can see your average miles per gallon, your instant average, as well as your fuel used, all that kind of information you may wanna see on a trip. But what's super cool is you can use the trip computer itself to estimate how long it'll take to get to your location and how far along you've gone. So the way that this system works is that you put in the mileage you have to travel to get to your destination. It will then give you an estimated time of arrival based off of your speed and distance traveled. Very futuristic and also a very handy and useful thing to not be late to your destination. So those are the basic functions of this touchscreen. Obviously, there's a lot here that it can do, and it reminds me a lot of manufacturers today stuffing a bunch of information into touchscreens and a bunch of different controls and whatnot. So it's pretty amazing to see that Oldsmobile was like 20 or 30 years ahead of their time by putting in so much information into a color touchscreen. They were able to actually do a really good job at integrating everything into this screen. It's extremely responsive. It's really easy to use. Everything is very clear, very big and easy to read and all the little details they put into it. It's absolutely astounding to me that they were able to accomplish this in 1992. And it's definitely one of the most incredible things I've seen in any car I've ever reviewed absolutely incredible and such a cool thing to see working in person. However, when it comes to technology, it isn't just the touchscreen that is impressive. The Tornado could be optioned with a cellular phone. This car has a cellular phone option, which is kind of sticking directly out of the car in the center console. Kind of an awkward place, but I suppose it's easy to get to. You can remove it and you can, of course, dial in the number that you want to call and then you can call them. However, this is an analog system and this also wasn't an original phone that came with this car. So of course it doesn't work. However, it is still pretty cool to see it here. It also did have a hands-free option. So you could actually have a microphone in the ceiling of the car, I believe, and it would listen to you that way and you'd be able to talk through the car without actually putting the phone up to your ear. Pretty impressive. And when you're done with the phone or if you don't want it sticking up here, you can actually fold it into the center console where it fits very nicely. And something else that I was surprised to see technology-wise with the Tornado is a CD player. It is located here in the center console and it is Delco branded just like many other GM vehicles at the time. But it's really impressive to see a CD player in a car from the early 90s when it was probably most common to see tape players in cars at this time. And and of course, because this car was built in the 1990s, it did have to come with an ashtray. This is located beneath the CD player and it is a pretty good size. There's also a center console shifter here. Very large, very easy to grip and use. And what's kind of funny with this, instead of just saying PRND to label the gears, they decided to actually spell them out by saying park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Don't really know why they did that, but that's what Oldsmobile decided to do. And also on the center console is probably one of the smallest and most shallow cup holders I have seen in any car ever. I wouldn't even trust this thing to hold a jello cup, let alone a water bottle, but at least it is there, and I guess the driver and the passenger are going to have to fight over it. And as far as storage goes in the interior, there is a pretty large center console. It is quite deep, surprisingly so, and there is a glove compartment, which also has a trunk released in it. However, there are no pockets or cubby holes anywhere else in this interior that I can see as far as the front seats go. Unfortunately, no location in the door to store stuff, so that's a bit of a shame just because there isn't really that much space to go around to store your things. There is also a very large center mirror in the Toronado. This is also an auto dimming mirror. You can turn that function off or set it to min or max strength. There are also vanity mirrors here for the driver and the passenger. They are both lighted and have a low and high setting. And there are lights in the ceiling that you can turn on and off by pressing them, as well as a switch to open and close the sunroof. And on the dashboard in front of the passenger here is the Oldsmobile script. No, there is not an airbag here, but at least if you get into a head-on crash, the last thing your passenger will see is the Oldsmobile name. All right, I have now squeezed myself into the back seat somehow, and these seats are still very comfortable places to be. The leather still feels nice. The seats themselves are soft, very similar to the front seats. However, not that I was expecting these to be roomy. They are very, very cramped back here. I'm not exactly a tall person, about 5'6", and if I put my feet underneath the seat in front of me, I can sit here relatively comfortably, but otherwise, 
there isn't really much room. And I did move the seats forward a bit just so A, you can see me, and two, I can actually fit back here without being claustrophobic. <laughs> Even though it is pretty tight back here, you can still find a few nice things here. There is a handle to get in and out of the car a little bit more easily. There are, of course, ashtrays back here as well, so people back here can still smoke. There are also little hooks for a coat jacket or something you may want to hang up back here, as well as lights in the ceiling and another little light in the back of the center console. And Oldsmobile did add a few luxurious features to these back seats. The headrests are quite large and supportive and soft. The word Trofeo is also stitched into the back seat, which is pretty luxurious. And there is a large and soft center armrest here, so those in the back seat can still be as comfortable as possible, even though they don't have a ton of legroom. Now that we've taken a look at the exterior and the interior of the Tornado, let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Okay, we are driving the Oldsmobile Toronado Trofeo. <laughs> and right away, this car makes me feel really cool when I'm driving it. I mean, I just feel like I am tech savvy. I'm driving an awesome car. I really love it. And uh, putting it on the road here, it really doesn't drive or uh, act in any unexpected way. The suspension, even though this is the Trofeo model and it has the tougher suspension, and this does have larger aftermarket wheels than what would have been on the car, so that affects the ride, but probably in a sporty way, but it still feels pretty mushy, honestly. The steering is more direct than, um, I think, than the Cadillacs from this era. It's still a little bit sharper, but it's definitely not like sharp steering. Even though this does not have a V8, it has the 3800 V6, um, it still sounds good, it feels good, it's um, certainly adequate on its power, and this car does still have aggressive or sporty tendencies. Um, even if it doesn't feel like a sports car, it's probably more sporty than most cars were back then. The seats are extremely comfortable, they're still bolstered, so if I was to go around a corner, um, I'd feel confident, I'd feel like I'm staying in the seat. The seats are very soft, surprisingly so, it has a good amount of squish to it, and of course, you can adjust it in just about any way you want, which is super impressive to me still. I mean, I'm really blown away that they have all these seat controls in this car. So it's really a impressively comfortable place to be and a relatively fun one as well. And I really do enjoy driving it because of that. And I also really enjoy it because of all the technology. I mean, just the screen here, the telephone. I mean, it has everything you could ever want if you're a businessman or someone who was busy in the 90s because you've got your calendar here you can set your events you can see on the calendar when you have to be somewhere you can of course get your trip computer set up so you know exactly how long it'll take to be there you can literally have your schedule um, figured out to a T and I think that's what's super cool about this car is that it was really geared towards giving people a tool uh, the tools necessary to live out their lives. This car isn't just meant to get you to those places, it's meant to get to you to those places you need to be on time. And I believe that this uh, touchscreen, the Visual Information Center, is actually a Sony Trinitron TV. And from what I gather, it's actually a pretty high quality television from this time period. And of course, Oldsmobile went to Sony and they wanted to get the best sort of device into their cars. But because it's a TV, an old one, <laughs> You can actually hear kind of that typical high-pitched ring um, in the background when that when this is turned on, which does bother me a bit. Maybe most people wouldn't be able to hear it, but the good thing is I probably will get used to it after a while. Okay, let's do a zero to 60 test run and see how the 3800 does. Uh, no tire spin, there's 20, 40. Okay, it eventually did shift, 50. 60. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Still pretty peppy. So I believe that this car would have gotten around a 10 second 0 to 60 uh, time. Certainly not fantastic, but for the time period, I'm sure that was average, if not a little bit better. So even though this car isn't extremely fast, it's not exactly the best performing car or handling car, the main purpose of this car was to be 
a look into the future, basically a test to see how far technology could be pushed at the time. However, I do wonder if maybe this car was a little bit too forward thinking because I feel like most people from the 90s, they may have gotten into this car and it probably would have been a shock to them. I mean, it's a lot for one car to have this all of a sudden when no other cars at the time had any of this sort of technology, especially when it comes to this screen. And most people probably would have viewed it as being unnecessary. And I do kind of wonder if Oldsmobile should have chosen a different focus for this car. Maybe they should have focused a little bit more on the quality of the interior, the driving dynamics, just to help better face the challenges that they were facing with the competition. But even though Oldsmobile did a fantastic job of designing the technology, including so much futuristic thoughts and ideas into this vehicle, it was unfortunately probably the last attempt they had to actually save the brand. And unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to be able to save it from its demise. And it's pretty interesting because today, now that Oldsmobile is gone, it seems that Cadillac has kind of picked up the mantle and is now the futuristic brand at General Motors. If Oldsmobile was still around today, it would very likely be the brand to get that kind of stuff first with autonomous driving technology, maybe larger touch screens that cover the dashboard. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you can probably tell, I had a fantastic time reviewing this car. This is such a sleek and futuristic vehicle, and it has so many different features that I never would have known were, were available even in the early 90s. And I'm guessing that most people who were around in the early 90s probably had no idea that these features existed. I'm just absolutely blown away, really truly impressed with, with how it all works. I hope you guys learned something new. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and to come back again soon for more videos. Thank you.